Good afternoon, São Paulo. You guys are hearing me okay? Awesome. But uh, I was told that in São Paulo, you guys have a lot of uh, emotions. Uh, I didn't see any. Good afternoon, São Paulo. Good afternoon. Awesome. You know what? Let's do the following. Let's stand up, everybody. We ate two hours ago. Stand up, everybody, just a second. And how five, high five to the next to you, to the person next to you, and say, now we talk mobility. Awesome. Let's do it. Thank you, São Paulo. I'm super excited to be here. You can be seated. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, I know that two hours after having had lunch, you know, you have digestion, so it gave you some wake up. Um, I see my presentation, there are some challenges in the, in the text. Maybe it broke when it was passed over. We're talking about the passenger age and the mobility service. But let me start out what happened just to me this morning. I left San Francisco at 9 a.m. this morning, and I landed in Guarulhos at 9.35. I'm seeing waving. Do, you know, do I know you? No? We don't know each other? I think it's the microphone. Hello. Thank you. Thank you. So I was saying before that I cannot work with a microphone like that. You know why? Because I'm from Italy. If you give me a microphone, I cannot talk. Okay? <laughs> so what I was telling you is that I, I landed at 9 a.m. in Guarulhos. And, uh, and uh, I came this morning from San Francisco. Yeah, you understood correctly. It took me just 35 minutes. What are you saying, Tommaso? Well, simple. I took the SpaceX BFR that takes you under one hour around the world. So it took me just 35 minutes from San Francisco to Guarulhos. So when I landed here, I thought, geez, a couple of years ago, a couple of decades ago, it still was a 12-hour flight, flying from San Francisco, going somewhere. And now in 35 minutes, I am right there. Then when I got to the airport, the beauty of it was that the SpaceX was connected to my autonomous and connected car, and therefore I didn't wait a second. I step out of Guarulhos, and there it was. My network that I am associated with, that I have a subscription with, is the Mercedes network. And I got into the car, and the Mercedes says, Olá, Tomaso, tudo bem? And I say, no, Alexa, please. I had a very short flight, but a very intense, so let's switch language, let's do something of English. And by the way, Alexa, did you please order what I had asked you to order? Because I had forgotten my shirt. So, and Alexa says, yes, we just bought the shirt. And it was right there. So my autonomous car, my connected car, in combination with Alexa from the SpaceX, got the order, ordered it, and my shirt was there. And there I had a moment again, and I thought again, Wow, even a couple of decades ago, I would have had to, go, to rent a car, to step, up, step out of the, of the traffic here, go to the shopping mall, into the mall, search the shirt, and back. This would have costed me at least two hours. And now, with the connected autonomous car, I was just sitting there and I had my shirt. And also, the other thing, when we drove on this main avenue, this crowded avenue here in Sao Paulo, what's the name of the crowded avenue in Sao Paulo? Avenida whatsoever. What's the name here? Help me out. What is it? Paulista. This was so crowded. And, you know, I was here in Brazil the first time in the 1997. And I said, I remember vividly in the 97, all those motor boys, right? Flying left and right, and you were scared. And I now today, with my connected autonomous driving car, 0 0.0001 collision rate. I was sitting in the back, super relaxed, got my massage, you know. And the beauty of it, the car was, is a subscription. I can terminate the contract anytime. I'm in time, and it's even more affordable. Ladies and gentlemen, dear Paulistas, who of you believes that this is going to be how the future looks like? Say, I. 
How about the rest? I would love to talk with you, but I don't have that much time. So this was a day, a story in the life of a passenger in 2050. We are going to talk about mobility, and before we start, let me give you a brief introduction about me, Tommaso. I do live in Silicon Valley for the last eight years, and yes, born and raised in Italy, lived in Germany for almost 20 years, a year in London, and then um, up to the crazy Silicon Valley. I'm a tech guy myself. I did in 18 years, I did four startups and two exits. I have roughly 70 to 75 articles on the market and a book coming out helping other entrepreneurs with lessons learned. I'm advisor to dozens of startups in Silicon Valley as well as part of startup initiatives such as the Google Launchpad, The Alchemist, Draper University, and I'm, uh, I'm part of the Sutarja Center uh, being a guest lecturer as well at Stanford being a guest lecturer. Now, what am I doing for a living? Awesome Venture is my latest activity for the last three years. What is it? It's an early stage investment firm that we invest in technology such as machine learning, artificial intelligence, but all solving challenges in the mobility industry. And that's what we are going to break down. Who of you is on Twitter? Raise your hands. Wow, not that many police on Twitter. So now it's time to take the Twitter handle T-O-D-I-B-A. And you have already understood that I like to interact with my audience, right? You're waiting for me. I was actually waiting for you. So let's do the following deal when I'm going to, to discuss here the topics. When I do like this, okay, then all of you do, wow. Let's test it. Okay. When I'm going to do like this, ta 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 ta, you guys do, ta 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 ta. Let's test it. I love Sao Paulo already. Let's talk about the industry of mobility. We are looking at 130 years plus of an industry being disrupted. Attention. Nah. Okay, I know. The next time we will do better. Automotive, aviation, maritime, railroad, gas and energy being disrupted. But why right now? Why is this happening right now? What are the moving forces behind it? Did you ask yourself? Let me help you in five points and tell you why. First point why mobility is being disrupted right now is about urbanization. All people moving to bigger city and causing challenges for the traffic and for the city to reorganize themselves in order to avoid congestions. The second reason why right now um, mobility is being disrupted, it's about pollution. The consequence of urbanization is we're having a serious impact on health of us living in major cities that is causing a huge and amangus challenge. The third challenge, because uh, mobility is changing right now, is about the aging population, having different needs, special needs and therefore impacting the mobility industry. The fourth one, as a force driving mobility changes, is that we are all connected, aren't we? And because we are all connected, we have an expectation that everything we touch, regardless if it's in-house IoT or on the go, must be connected and must be smart. Does it make sense, yes or no? Yes or no, does it make sense? Awesome. Okay, I know you guys are having a translation, so there is a delay. <laughs> and fifth, sharing economy. The sharing economy is sharing and shaping, moving our values from owning something towards sharing something. We share knowledge, we share time, we share houses, we share cars. These are the five moving forces why the mobility industry is being disrupted right now. But how does the near future look like? Where is it going? There are three main pillars I would like to break down with you. First of all, the future will be looking autonomous. And I had already a story. It means that here, what we understand today under transportation will become a utility service, like turning on and off the light, like opening up the water. It will be utility. The second pillar will be connected. We will be interconnected. And what does that mean? Because we will be interconnected on the go, 
we will have a better experience for us, for our needs, for our wants. And last but not least, we have the electrified, which will, where we will have a better fuel economy, a more affordable economy overall about the car, and yes, less pollution. Tommaso, can you tell me something what's happening right now? Yes, let me share a couple of things that indicates these trends today. Oh, by, by the way, let, let, let me go back. Let me see if it works. It works, awesome, second time was better. So first trend, trend that we are seeing is that whomever is in the space of mobility is moving to one location. Guess where this location is? Silicon Valley. Regardless if it's a huge brand or if it's a startup. You know why? Because communication and collaboration is driving adoption. Who of you is in mobility? Raise your hands, please. Well, nobody in mobility here? Here, one in mobility, we'll talk later. We'll have a chat with a wine. No, a caipirinha. Wine is in Italy. What is happening also nowadays? That the VCs, VCs is venture capital market, is having a lot of investments in those spaces of autonomous, connected, and electrified in order to have market shares and therefore building the major brands. Another trend that we are seeing what's happening today, and we are enjoying it already, are the ride hailing services, right? Where we basically have an Uber or a Lyft and so on around the globe. Here, the blue parts are basically the, the Uber uh, market capitalization that we are seeing. We are understanding and seeing every day that because we have artificial intelligence, because we are connected, we have less risks based on the example. The insurance will go down because we are electrified. The car will cost less. So this is shaping our understanding of mobility towards instead of buying something, we are going to access cars instead of buying access, right? And these are the, the, moving, the moving forces behind it. And I'm missing one moving force. With it. OK, here it is. I want to share with you a couple of vivid highlights. I was three weeks ago in Las Vegas at CES, not having party. I was for working there, right? And I, wa I want to share with you what we did, what we saw at the CES. First, and these are just a couple of, of, of examples. Mercedes coming out with the MBUX. It's a new user experience, a new dashboard where people can interact with the dashboard uh, based on gestures and based on voice and touches. For instance, BMW. If you want to buy a new BMW, you can set up a VR, you can set your VR system, and you can select the colors, the interior, and it gives you a better experience even before buying the car. Alexa, it was not a joke, it's coming to the car. Toyota is bringing Alexa to the car in a couple of months in a series here. So um, we are having and we are going to see that voice recognition is going to become a major trend in the market. The company Gentex allows to um, see and recognize and authenticate you as a driver or you as the person in the car and therefore basically giving you access basically to the car. We had a great hype with another brand called Byten. There was something like the Faraday future of, of the past years with great values in terms of an electric vehicle. And another one that I'd like to share with you, Paulistas, I wanted to bring you something from Vegas, was the B2V from Nissan. What does B2V stand for? Brain to vehicle. You can wear a form of a headset that you can see there on the pictures left and right. And it anticipates today as we speak, that's not the future, your brain waves, and so you can basically avoid any hassle. Under the motto, together we are stronger. Okay, what does it all sum up to? Unlike in the past, we are seeing that whomever is in mobility is shifting from the vehicle, giving attention to the vehicle, to giving attention to us. It's shifting to becoming user-centric. In other words, it means that instead of concentrating on features, now the market is concentrating on feelings. 
And because it's concentrating on feelings, by the way, let me show you feelings. Are these your feelings about listas? It seems like I'm in Antarctica. Like again, feelings. It's about feelings. And it's important because if I feel you, if I understand you, I can bring you something customized. So how are we going to do it? With sensors with cameras, with smart textiles, with artificial intelligence, with computer visions, with machine learning, in order to understand us better and giving us a better experience. Now, I'm halfway through the presentation. By the way, tell me when you take a picture so that I can pose, okay? Thanks. <laughs> uh, so please bear with me a second. I was talking about ACE, which is artificial, uh, autonomous, it's connected, and it's electrified. And then I'm talking about the fact of being smarter. You know what, is, what it means? This means that we all will become passengers. Repeat it with me. We will become passengers. And because we will become passengers, we will and we will gain back in the near future one humongous, one tremendous important value. You know what it is? Time. We will win back time as a passenger. What is it we are going to do with the time? Manicure, pedicure in the car, shopping, right? I know the Brazilian love that, right? <laughs> so shopping, advertisement. So we are going to shift instead of driving. Does it make sense, yes or no? We are having time. And this is opening up, dear ladies and gentlemen, Sao Paulo, a new economy. And by the way, who put together my slides? Messed up a bit, but it's okay. Oh, this is a passenger, the passenger economy. And you see here a value, which is seven trillion. I'm not capable of writing seven trillion. Seven trillion in 2050. It's called the passenger economy. And this is how we are going to divide the passenger economy. Three trillion dollars is going to be in B2B, which means mobility services for B2B, such as sharing uh, trucks, uh, sharing OE OEM in a mobile network for B2B, verticalizing industry-specific uh, B2B-oriented vehicles, right? 3.8 trillion is going to the consumer world. Again, imagine the same things, but just for consumer oriented. And now we are going to have $200 billion of a new market. A new market that is going to be emerging in the mobility space. Let me share with you here a couple of values. 25% Europe is going to benefit about it. 30% of the seven trillion is going to benefit in the north, between North and South America. And yes, almost 50% is going to be in Asia. So for those out there, this is a path on how to do business. Let me show you here some example. Amazon Prime, delivering and trying and some prototypes to deliver packages through the air. I have to say, ah, oh, Tomaso, this is too scary. Well, let me show you here the other version. Robovan, partnership between Starship Technologies and Mercedes-Benz Vans, creates the perfect synergy of transportation technology Mercedes. for local delivery. Innovation. With transportation methods, robots and vans converge into one. The result is reinventing the themselves, cost-effective and convenient and delivery bringing system in the world. The Robovan is local the first logistics. in the world transportation system that comprises of self-driving delivery robots developed by Starship Technologies and Mercedes-Benz Vans. Just because of the time, let me show you some couple of other things. The Hyperloop originally started from Elon Musk, now taken over from, from Virgin and Richard Branson. It will allow us to drive 100 miles, which is roughly 160 kilome kilometers, in 15 minutes, in roughly 15 minutes. It will reduce the railroad cost by two-thirds, cost reduction of railroad of two-thirds. It goes up to 240 miles an hour, and it's already tested in the Middle East, in uh, India, and in uh, United States, of course. And the first Hyperloops we will see in 36 months. The future is here. 
this is an experiment or a, or a product from Toyota. It's called the e-pallet. It's going to create a new form of transportation. What is it you're going to do? Not only to eat pizza. As, of course, as an Italian, I had to put something with food, right? But what you can do here is e-commerce. You can have a meeting in there. We are going to see new hotels driving through the cities, new way of having meetings, new day way of logistics that are coming up. This is Toyota already presented this year again at the CES, right? Tommaso, what are we talking about? You talk a lot about a lot of topics. We are talking about time. What is it that we do with time? Well, usually with time, we want to be entertained. Does it make sense, yes or no? Hold on, let me see if you're sleeping. No, you're here, okay. Entertained, right? Intel and Warner Brothers is cooperating to do what? Entertainment for us, right? Um, NVIDIA that we know from the graphic cards, over 320 collaborations with car makers, um, mapping services, software companies, um, sensor companies, trucking, tier one providers, in order to bring machine learning, artificial intelligence, and provide a better experience. Valeo, a tier one provider global, is presenting this year at CES the smart cocoon. What's the smart cocoon? I would like you to imagine that you're entering the car and non-invasive technologies such as camera and sensors are basically seeing and recognizing the driver and monitoring in order to have a well-being in the car and recognize the gender the heart rate, heart rate breath, uh, breathing rate, clothing index, it knows how many layers you have in order to what? To create a well comfort into the car. And it shows laterally in the radiant panel activation what kind of, of in-cabin in, in, in experience you are having in order to see how you're doing and offering therefore a better experience through data. This is another example, again, presented this year. I had the pleasure to be in one of those cars at the, the CES, uh, so it's, it's coming, coming already. And I'm almost done, I have, uh, I'm good in time, I have five minutes. What does it all mean? What is the secret sauce, dear ladies and gentlemen? The secret sauce here behind this is that we are moving from an idea and a definition of success which today is defined by selling something towards creating an experience. How many miles have you ridden, right? And then what, what form of a, an experience, what form of a rating do you have? This is what the future looks like. The future will look like that any mobility service is going to be a moving data center. Today, 50 gigabyte, tomorrow, 550 ter today 500 gigabyte tomorrow 50 terabyte of data data that we collect inside the car outside the car through the apps and it means dear ladies and gentlemen that while 10 years ago the one the market leader on the market were leading and handling with oil today it's all about data the market is ruled by the alphabets of this world, the uh, Alibaba, the uh, uh, Microsoft, the Facebook, the Amazon. They own the data, they have the data, which means, yes, data is the new oil. And because this is very important, I would like to have some emotions here. Ah, okay, let's do it again, let's see some emotions here. You see, you always have a second chance in life. What do we do with the data? With the data, we connect. With the data is connected, it comes from us, again, inside the car, with the sensors, with the, with the cameras. And once we have the data, such as this company that I'm part of the advisory board, it's called Sensum, it syncs in the cloud. It syncs with other applications that we have, with other IoT devices. And with this, we have more data that we need to analyze. It needs to know the insights. This is where machine learning and artificial intelligence comes in place. Does it make sense, yes or no, so far? And because it starts making sense, 
with the insights that we have, it can provide you a better service. It can provide you a, a customized service. It can provide you a personalized mobility experience for the passenger age. And this is it from the land of the craziness of Silicon Valley. I would like to thank you. And again, my phone is totally broken. Who of you would like to stay in contact with Silicon Valley? Raise your hands. Who of you would like? You don't want to stay in contact with Silicon Valley? Not interested in Silicon Valley? OK. Who of you would like to have the presentation? Raise your hands. Who of you would like to chat with me on Facebook? Raise your hands. That's cool. OK, this is what we do. Please take your phone now. I'm the one who doesn't say, please put your phone on silent. I say, take your phone, go on Facebook. We have still two minutes left. On Facebook, you search the following closed group. It's an invitation group. We have roughly 1,000 entrepreneurs on the group. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to share this presentation with Sao Paulo and say thank you and share knowledge with ent from entrepreneurs to entrepreneurs. Now, the group is called B dot what it takes and please put the dot in between b e dot dot what it takes okay and then you go on the main navigation you search for groups who, who has already done it raise your hands awesome i will give you and grant you access later on okay thank you for that and now it's time to take a picture on stage i have here my beautiful you're beautiful my wife, by the way. Um, my beautiful assistant, my wife, my partner, my better half, my boss, okay? And I will take, first I'll take a video with you guys. I will say three, two, one, and then you say, awesome. Let's try it. Three, two, one. Awesome. Okay. I am live from Sao Paulo on stage, and I have an amazing, tremendous audience. Let me hear the Paulistas. How was it? Awesome, thank you. Thank you. And I won't go down from stage. That's the problem with Tommaso. When he's on stage, he doesn't go down. Thank you.